All right, let's go to our last episode in this crash course for confirmation. We are going to talk about the world that we live in a little bit and how it has to do with our mission as Christians and in our baptismal covenant, what we are vowing to do as Christians who remain in this world on this side of heaven. So let's get into it. All right, so we're going to do a little bit of world talk. So I want to start off with a little reflection, just ask you to think about, in general terms, some things that you love about the world that we live in. What are the things that just, you know, you couldn't do without, that really show that God, you know, when God at the end of making the creation, he saw that everything was good after every day, he said it's good. At the end of the whole thing, he says, it's very good. Those things that are very good about creation. The first thing that I think of is family, relationships. You know, I think about food and how many different types of wonderful food there are throughout the world and every culture. I think about music, right? I think about places, experiences, you know, locations in nature. It's just a lot of good things. And, you know, depending on where we are in life, uh, whether our tank is full or empty, you know, kind of how things are going with this, it can be hard to remember the good things in life and to really be thankful for them, to really dwell in them uh, and be energized, charged by them. Again, this gets back a little bit to the Holy Spirit that we were talking about, God's presence among us, in the things that are good that have been created. Now, think about those things that are not so great because, you know, we can't live with blinders on thinking it's all good and everything's all good at all times, right? We've got division, we've got wars, we've got plague, famine. Yeah, and the stuff that we're up to and the stuff that is beyond our control and we don't respond so well to, there's just there's just a lot of it. Um, there's a lot of it out there. There's a lot to endure in this world. And, you know, Paul says that we have to endure these things to build our character, right, to build our faith up so that the suffering that we encounter, you know, does not make us or the bad things in the world don't make us lose faith, but help us to strengthen our faith, Uh so, you know, it's a challenge. We've, there's wonderful things in this world, uh, and then there's things that are challenging. So this is a, a quick video. I'm not going to show the whole thing to you. In fact, I'm going to stop it right here. Uh, see if you can go to this video, How the Five Major World Religions Spread, because what it's going to show you over the course of time, beginning in 3000 BCE, all the way to 2000, where we are today, is what the world looks like in terms of Hinduism, Judaism, Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam, and their spread across the world. These are the religions that we find in our world. Christianity still is the largest religion when it comes to the global population, but it's one of many major world uh, religions. There are also, of course, smaller religions in indigenous populations, and religion is a, is a huge part of, of humanity. I also wanted to say, you know, we've got uh, a lot of folks these days, and before I get into this slide, there's a lot of folks these days that will say that they're non-religious or have no religious preference. Uh, a lot of folks that no longer go to church, um, folks that believe that they can be spiritual but not religious, and, and and I don't mean to say that they can't, but just that's the way that they speak about their spirituality, their connection with God. Uh, it's kind of absent of the church, and that's a growing number in the population. And of course, it most often happens when folks leave the church after their childhood and decide that they're not going to continue with that um, on and on. So this, again, speaks to what we're doing here and vowing, you know, to try our best with God's help uh, to continue to be a part of the church, uh, right? And to continue, even despite the way the world is going, how things are shifting, 
maybe the people that you know as you grow up won't go to church anymore. You know, are you going to be like them or, you know, or is this baptismal covenant going to be on your heart, this vow going to be in your heart to, to continue on? So all of this is stuff to pray about. And as we think about the world, we come to this question in the baptismal covenant. Will you seek and serve Christ and others, loving your neighbor as yourself? And this gets back to the word that we learned in the first episode, doctrine. Doctrine is the teaching of the church, this doctrine of humanity, the teaching of humanity, what we believe in our church, in the Episcopal church, and our way of thinking, is that all people were created in the image of God. We get that from Genesis when it says that male and female created in the image of God. We say uh, amago dei is the fancy uh, Italian, Italian, Latin way of saying uh, that very thing. And so when we say amago dei, everybody has a spark of God within the image of God uh, within them. And so that means that everybody that we encounter is in some way uh, and in a significant way, God's, God's own uh, children of God created in the image of God. All people are sinners of God's own redeeming. Now, this is the part where we get into the doctrine of salvation when we said it's for all people. This path of redemption is for all people. And so when we encounter a stranger, not only are they someone we've never met, they're also created in the image of God and the center of God's own redeeming. And the way that C.S. Lewis said it is we've never met a mere mortal. Everybody that we encounter is immortal, right? And that way like God. And so deserving of our respect, and we're called, therefore, to love them, to seek and serve Christ in them, that part of God that is in them, and love them as we love ourselves. Of course, that means you got to love yourself too, which can be hard. Um, but that's another episode, I guess. So when we seek and serve Christ, we believe that, and it's just the same slide again, so if, just in case you wanted to read that again, um, we're carrying out the mission of the church, and this is the next vow in the baptismal covenant. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Every human being, all people, I will with God's help. The mission of the church is to restore people to unity with God and each other in Christ. The church carries out its mission as it prays, worships, proclaims the gospel, promotes justice, peace, and love. This is the hard work that we're called to do. You see that? Restore people to unity? I mean, think about the number of ways that people think about life, what's important, which groups they should be in, which ones that they should avoid, what kind of thinking is right, what kind of thinking is wrong, whether that be political, economic, social, whatever it is, all of these ways as humanity, as people in the world trying to figure out what's going on, that we divide into camps, we divide into tribes, and we say this is the right way, that's wrong. We say that above and beyond all of that, we've got to strive for justice and peace among all people. And that at least means that justice be done, right? If there is wrong, then it needs to be righted. And if there is war, we need to seek after peace. And if there is conflict, we need to seek after resolution. And then again, respect the dignity of every human being. If every human being is created in the image of God and the center of God's own redeeming, Every human being reserves and <laughs> deserves respect and dignity. Um, they have that dignity given to them by God, and they deserve respect. And so it's our job to do that and to strive for justice and peace. And as we do that, as we encounter the people who we may be in conflict with, the first thing that we go in thinking about them and as we engage with them, we say, you're God's own, right? Even though we disagree, you know, God is there between us. So but that's our mission. That's the hard work that we are called to do. And so I hope that as we take this vow and as we say this baptismal covenant, you know, you've got to get 
energized by the Holy Spirit in order to accomplish this very difficult work. But I hope in saying it out loud, again, that when we say these vows, that our head would be connected to our heart, that we would mean what we say, and that we would try our best to fulfill these vows. All right. Well, it's a short session this time. You know, there's a lot more to talk about, about what's going on in the world. You know, I encourage you to study, you know, anthropology, study social trends, study, you know, economic trends and all those kind of things. So much to learn about in this world. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. And the more that we understand about each other, the better off we're going to be. We understand the differences, you know, in the end, for me, you know, it all comes down to everybody wanting to be safe, everybody wanting to be happy, everybody wanting to be accepted, validated, given the space that they need to be themselves and to pursue their own flourishing, thriving, all those kind of things. And, and so if we can do that and acknowledge we all have the same core desire, want, needs, um, and they manifest themselves in all kinds of ways, right? And the, the great variety of all the ways that people are in the world. If we can do that, then we can begin to strive for that unity. So thanks again. If you got questions, you want to continue the conversation, holler at me in the comment section or by emailing the church, calling the church, or just come see us on Sunday morning, right? All right, you have made it. Congratulations if you're at this point and you've gone through all three. Then I hope you've learned a little bit more about God, the church, and the world, and you've learned a little bit more uh, about what you need for confirmation. And in order to, again, say these vows and take these vows seriously uh, as you say them in the gathered community of the church with the bishop present, uh, and we all do our best with God's help uh, to live out the baptismal covenant. Thank you and peace.